The sound of music abounds the hills of the Homewood campus of Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland. The faithful call it a cappella, but to the mental notes, it's the reason they stay in on most weekends. Well, that and studying. Touring the East Coast from school to school, this Nalgene-wielding wind section carries their tune to sold-out concerts and from their latest chart-topping release, Verticality. But there was a time when notes didn't carry, and many of their ideas just didn't resonate with those outside the troupe. This is their story when JH1 goes behind the music of the mental notes. What did you tell them? <laughs> Upon arriving at Hopkins four years ago, a young Vadim discovered the same desolate place that remains today. Back then, he envisioned mixing comedy and music, but most students frowned on the idea. And though Vadim didn't know it, there were others with similar aspirations. He encountered a high-spirited group one evening outside MSE, and, well, they made music. Public interest in the idea grew quickly. What you have to understand is this a cappella thing just revolutionized the music industry. I mean, people have been doing some crazy stuff with instruments, like this this girl in band camp one time. But, you know, compared to what they were doing, it's nothing, nothing. Look, everybody laughs. That guy who turned down the Beatles saying, you know, calling him an arsehole because he said the guitar groups were on the way out and they weren't going to amount to anything. Let me tell you, that man was right. The Beatles, the Stones, the Frogs, none of them mean shite compared to the mental notes. Other a cappella groups attempted to jump on the bandwagon, some failing tragically. La 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 la. So a baby seal walked into a club. Shut <laughs> up! Go find the key! Go find the key! Still, the mental notes thrived in their comedic attempts. And then he was like, I even built my house with my own hands. And I was like, Seamus, you built your house with your own hands? And he was like, yes, but they'll never call me Seamus the house builder, will they? I was like, no, Seamus, I guess they won't. And then I heard him say, off to himself, but you fuck one goat! <laughs> Mental notes were on cloud nine when disaster suddenly struck. So how are you? I'm all right, you know. They have classes, they suck. Yeah, you know. They do suck. But uh, what are you up to? I'm joining the student council. No! In his junior year, Vadim was elected to student council and forced to leave the group. Student council wouldn't let him lead the double life he wanted. Vadim was torn over the decision. He was, he was the dues to our bebops. We all knew we'd miss him dearly. Vadim continued to wear his Hawaiian shirt from time to time, and every time he hears verticality on the local Hopkins radio, it brings a tear to his eye. As other influences moved in, things went from bad to worse. It was right after we got our first big break, the pack concert, the winner of 94, uh, the winner of Discontent. Well, it was our after party, and the whole Outdoors Club showed up. I mean, we couldn't believe it. I mean, they were real big back then uh, with that single they had, the, um, what is it? Uh, uh, we're not a singing group. We don't know who's on the fucking record. Remember that? Well, they introduced us to Nalgene that night. You know, you know we, we all thought they were great. I mean, they held water. I mean, they, they were, they were non-destructible, they, they were non-porous, I mean, we could pee in them and then drink out of them the next day without even washing them, it was great. You know, I mean, nobody really knew they were addictive or anything. I mean, the people over at Health and Wellness were excellent. What started out as a throat moistening enhancer quickly became an addiction. It's a problem, admit it, man! You gotta... Oh. Ah. With Eric's addiction lingering over the group, tension developed, and tenor John Stoneham, better known as Lyric, began to feel isolated. I don't care about your fucking vision. No, look, Nobody else fucking look cares at either. this. She looks beautiful. She looks beautiful like that. But that's like because that. she's Eric. No, fuck. You won't you listen to my vision. You would not look You beautiful. won't listen to my vision. Let's see you find a good third tenor. I'm leaving. I'm going to be a star. John Stoneham, better known as Lyric, was replaced with ease by a much better singer. His solo record, all tenor, that's right, no other voice parts, just no, no instruments either, just tenor, flopped critically and commercially. 
dogs were having hemorrhages. Its creator was sneered at, discredited, and once the Quality Music Act of 2001 was enacted, arrested, dragged into the street, tarred and feathered, and discombobulated. Who? Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember when Lyric left. No one gave a fuck. I was glad he was gone. You've talked to us far more than any other members and that you are widely accused of slandering your ex-groupmates at every opportunity. Is there any chance that you're lying to us just to get revenge? Yes. The mental notes were spinning out of control. In addition to onstage drug use, they were equally indiscreet about intraband hookups. I'm not going to name names. I don't have to, it's all been recorded. Which is kind of silly since everyone has gotten together with everyone else at some point. Lisa? Oh, uh, yeah, people were even hooking up on stage. Another temptation began to pull the group apart. ex beetle breaker Yoko Ono, resident of Baltimore since her infamous husband's assassination in 1980, has been spotted at several Mental Notes concerts. Yeah, she kept coming to all of our parties and calling herself Gabby claiming the ability to take us to places we'd never been. No one really paid any attention to her. Well, until she reached Vince. Then they became inseparable and insufferable. It was perfect. She was my, you know, she showed me there was more to life than comedy and music. We'd become more popular than Jesus. Well, no, not most of the saints. Well, definitely the apostles. The, the important thing now is us. His appearances at rehearsal became more and more erotic. I mean, we expected and welcomed that. I mean, we are the self-proclaimed, painfully sexy mental notes. But after they became more and more erratic, then we knew we were going to have serious problems. The group dwelled on for a while without their percussionist until finally acquiring an acapella drum machine. Meanwhile, Vince began a short and moderately successful career, aided by Gabby releasing his ever-popular ode to the TAs, Give Bees a Chance. The group recovered, finding new members across the years in the talented class of 2003 and 2004. They continued to perform on college campuses, and are planning to release a new album, Horizontal. From Funny to Mayhem, this group has had their share of ups and downs, lefts and rights, horizontals to verticals, but in the end, their notes rang true.